welcome to the Rap 4 Podcast, the show where we explore timeless literacy classics. In today's episode, we journey into the haunted world of Toni Morrison's beloved. This Pulitzer-winning, prize-winning novel dwells deep into the complexities of slavery, motherhood, and identity. Join us as we unravel the symbolism, themes, and theories behind this extraordinary work of fiction. Beloved by Toni Morrison is a novel that takes us on a profound exploration of the lasting scars left by slavery. The story revolves around Setha, an escaped slave haunted by her traumatic past. Let's begin by dwelling into the major themes of the novel. Yeah, um, but before we delve in, I kind of wanted to think about how each of the three parts of the book start. You know, for part one, we have 124 is spiteful, part two, 124 is loud, and part three, 124 is quiet. And we also see it like that the house of the baby beloved haunts morphs and changes alongside our characters. Yeah, that's actually an interesting point, Luke. How about Madison? Can you explain a little bit more about the themes in Beloved that Wesley pointed out? Of course. Um, Beloved is rich with many themes. However, there are three main themes which I personally feel best captures the true meaning behind the novel. One of the central themes in Beloved is the trauma of slavery. Motherhood and sacrifice are also key themes, highlighting the sacrifices mothers make and their impact on their children. Lastly, the novel explores the ghosts of the past, symbolizing the haunting legacy of slavery that continues to affect the characters. I also like to add that characters actually represent this aspect beautifully in the novel as well. We have like Paul D, for example, who's kind of, who's like kind of one of the main characters. He's a physical reminder that Setha's past as a slave is always returning, no matter how far she decides to flee from Sweet Home. That's an important point you mentioned, Lou. The first topic I want to briefly explore is trauma. Setha's own experiences as a slave on Sweet Home Plantation becomes a central aspect of the novel. Often referring to her scars as the choke cherry tree, Setha's memories of being whipped emphasizes the psychological and emotional trauma of her past. The scars serve as a continual reminder of the physical trauma she suffered, being raped by the school teacher's nephews, the loss of her children, and separation from her husband. Secondly, we'll view motherhood and sacrifice. Trauma and motherhood and sacrifice go hand in hand as Setha gave birth to four children while in slavery, but her relationship with them was filled with fear and limitations. Fearing that her children would be taken away, she made a desperate and tragic decision to kill her daughter, who manifests as beloved in order to protect her from the horrors of a life of slavery. And lastly, ghosts of the past. Beloved's character is the embodiment of the past and is believed to be the ghost of Setha's deceased daughter. Her sudden appearance at 124 Bluestone, Bluestone Road is a mystery, further showing that she symbolizes the unresolved haunting of loss and slavery for Setha. Another character, Paul D, is also haunted by a beloved, for she, she seduces him and reminds him of his traumatic past of sexual abuse he underwent in prison in Alfred, Georgia. This goes to ultimately show that Beloved's existence serves as a painful reminder that the past cannot be forgotten and will only be re-experienced without truly confronting it. Good feedback. On the other hand, Vivian, what do you think about Madison's point about ghosts of the past being a theme of the book? Yeah, so building off of Madison saying that the main theme of the novel is ghosts of the past and Luke's comment about Paul D. returning, I actually think that Beloved herself can be interpreted as a symbol while she is one of the main antagonists of the novel, she is also a representative of the other antagonists, something a lot more abstract and kind of unbeatable, which is the past. She herself is a ghost, or rather, we can consider her a ghost of Sethe's past. And we can see that in the fact that the present situation in the book takes place with Sethe and Paul D in 124 Bluestone Road, while the past is considered Sethe and Paul D's prior experiences. Just like how Sethe and Paul D's past continue to haunt the present day by making them the hardened and like emotionally and mentally complex people they are now, seeing how the past memories are interspersed with the present, Beloved comes to 124 Bluestone Road. She also only appears at the house after Paul D does, reminding both Sethe and Paul D of their past. All of that establishes Beloved as kind of like a symbol of the past coming to continue to haunt Sethe and Paul D. And what about Beloved's disappearance at the end of the book, though? We learned that the past can't really disappear. So how would you interpret Beloved's ending? Well, I actually think that Beloved disappearing after Sethe attacks Mr. Bodron actually further cements her symbolism. Sethe's main trauma is a result of her inability to protect herself and her family. While she successfully sent her children away from Sweet Home in the past, 
She also had her baby's milk stolen away from her. She was desperate when the school teacher came to take her and her children back to Sweet Home, and it eventually led to her killing Beloved and her two sons running away. Back to the present, however, instead of cowering and being unable to protect Denver from who she thought was a school teacher, Sethe tries to fight back. This shows how Sethe improved from her past of not being able to protect her children. Following this, Beloved is then exercised from 124 Booster Road. I think that Morrison's timing is really intentional here and just hammers in the idea that the past is no longer going to haunt Sethe. Harry, what do you think the most interesting part about Beloved was for you? Yeah, you know what I found interesting? It's that no matter how many times you read this book, you're going to find so many different angles throughout the whole book. I mean, there's this concept called multivocality, which le lets the character's voice shine throughout the whole book, and you can see their perspective and experiences throughout the whole novel. Ooh, that's a really interesting take. Whose perspective in the book did you like the most? You know what? I actually enjoyed Denver's perspective throughout the book. There's actually this quote that I could feel Denver's despair on regaining her mother back, and it goes like this. Ha, shy. Now Denver was lonely. All that leaving, first her brothers, then her grandmother, serious losses since there were no children willing to circle her in a game or hang by their knees from the porch railing. None of that had mattered as long as her mother did not look away as she was doing now, making Denver long, downright long, for a sign of spite from the baby ghost. This showed how alienated she felt from both of them, and her realization and fear of what was happening. I also saw that there is also theories used as post-colonial analysis which shows the aftermath of slavery and its impact on the identity of the characters. It was like peeling back the layers of an onion, helping us understand the characters' deepest desires and traumas, which added so much depth to the story. Yeah, and so, so as we conclude our exploration of Beloved by Morrison, for a lot of the profound understanding of the enduring impact of slavery on individuals and society, challenging us to confront the complexities of history, identity, and trauma. Beloved, to me at least, sits among the ranks of Gatsby or The Catcher in the Rye when it comes to like must-read American literature. And we kind of sincerely hope that you're as fascinated with Seth's story as we were. And with that in mind, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for more fascinating discussions on Thomas Classics. And until next time, happy reading.